Hello everybody, so now we've got our characters interacting with stuff. Let's actually set up our item info struct. So I got some notes out here just to make sure we hit everything. Cause you you want to make sure that your item info, the struct that we're going to make our data table out of, that it's 100% before we establish that data table. Otherwise it can cause you a lot of headaches. I found that out the hard way a couple of times now. <laughs> So it's better to have too much on it that you don't end up utilizing than to have too little and then go back. So make sure when you do this that uh, you know exactly what you want on your item info struct. So I've got this one planned out for us for this series. So if you're following along, then you should be fine. So the first thing we are going to need is an enumeration. So if you don't know where to get those, it's under blueprints, enumeration. So the first one is going to be item ID underscore E and this is basically a list of every item in the game so you know how some the games have like 001 and it's a health potion or 002 mana potions that's what this is now we're gonna need another enumeration that is an item type underscore E and this is the different types of items we'll have now we can adjust enumerations as we need to later on, it's just important that we have them. So if we need to add different types later or different things to our item ID, we don't have to have those fully planned out. That can adjust with the game. It's just important to have the info struct that everything is going to be based off of. That's what really needs to be applied. So we got that, that structure class. All right. So we can come back and adjust those in a little bit. Let's go ahead and create a right click blueprint. We want to create a structure. And this is our item info underscore s. And I'm going to double click and open that up. And the very first variable up at the top is going to be the item ID enumerator. So it'll be a type item ID e uh, e. Then we will add a variable that will be item type, and that one will be, oop. If it opens up over here, it's going to be a waste of time. So item type enumerator. Then the next one cannot parse value. Okay, we will have to add one to each of those before this thing will be able to be saved, but let's go ahead and finish this. So it's item name for the third one and it is a text I know there's that name here and I never really messed with these I'm not sure I just always use the text let's check this item name item image item description so we got item name item image this one will be a text sure Texture or Texture 2D. I'm just going to use Texture 2D. Object reference. And then this one is item description, which is also a text. And back out here one more time just to double check this. Current stack, max stack, recipe. So we'll add one that is an integer, and this is the current stack. Our inventory is going to be stackable again that will be an integer once we set that we can set add another variable that is max stack this is how many we're holding this is how many we can hold but this will also be affected by a weight limit later on and then it was recipe so we'll add another variable since it's a survival based game we'll be able to craft some stuff so we'll add a recipe this one is going to be a special kind of variable called a map and this will take in two types of variables, an item ID enumerator and then an integer. So basically we tell it what item we'll need to craft and how many we'll need of that item to craft. So back out here one more time, we have crafting level, crafting XP, craft difficulty. Crafting, oh, we'll just do it this way. So we wanna turn this back into a single this will be crafting level. We want to make this one and this one can be an integer. 
then this one is going to be the crafting XP, which is basically how much experience we gain from crafting said item. That will be a float. And then this is going to be the craft difficulty, basically how uh, how long it will take to craft said item. That will also be a float. Then there's the structure reference, min potency, max potency, item weight. Alright, so the structure reference is something we also need to set up. Uh, it'll be a class reference, and since this is a crafting game, kind of like Ark, you can build like campfires or walls and floors and stuff. Those are considered structures. So we, since we're going to be able to place structures later on and build stuff, we'll go ahead and create a blueprint class of an actor and this will be our base structure underscore BP. That way we just go ahead and have the class reference. So we'll go back in here, add the variable that will be our structure ref for when we start crafting those and placing them down. Base structure, and this is a class reference, not an object reference on this one. Um, min potency, max potency, weight. All right, so this is this next one is a min potency, which is minimum potency, basically a. Uh, it'll be a float, and it'll be the lower end of how effective the item is. So we'll add one more that is the max potency. In the first one, we just added the one potency value, but it's nice to have a little effective range so like you have a weapon that can do between two and four damage that way it varies it up a little bit and you don't have to do the math on the other end you can just establish it once and then there you go so min potency max potency and then item weight so we'll have a carry weight capacity that will slow us down when we're reaching the full all right so we got Item ID, item type, item name, item image, item description, current stack, max stack, recipe, crafting level, crafting XP, difficulty, structure, reference, min, potency, max potency, item weight. All right. I'm going to save this just in case I need it later for whatever reason. Even though it's all right here, I don't know why. So before we save that, let's go into our item ID, and we'll add the first one which is just empty like if you don't have any item at all and then we'll go into the item type and for the first one we'll just make it a health item so once that's done we should be able to go back into our item info struct and there it's good to go hey it actually says good to go nice I'm recording right yes <laughs> All right, so now let's save everything. And we can right click, go to our blueprints. Nope, not under blueprints, it's under miscellaneous. And we can create our data table. So create a data table. You can pick your row structure and this is how it'll lay out the items in your data table. I wanna use my item info struct. Click okay and this is our item data table underscore dt double named I guess I guess it could have been item info underscore data dt yeah whatever it all works so now if you open that up you'll see you can add a new row to all this and each one of these can be separated and they all have that structure that we just created so this is how a lot of games handle manage their inventories and such it's through data tables and stuff structs and all that jazz so we don't gotta worry about this right now. What we need to do is go into our player base blueprint and we're going to add a variable to the player base called inventory that will be of the type item info struct and this one is going to be an array. That way we can hold a bunch of these. This is what keeps track of what items we have so this way we can have a bunch of them. Now we're also going to create another variable called 
inventory size or backpack size or whatever you want to call it but it is an integer and it is a single now we're going to create two more one is current carry weight basically how much we're ho weight we're carrying at the time current carry weight and then we will add one more that is max weight capacity all right so the inventory will be defaulted to nothing but our inventory size I'm gonna set this to 8 just random arbitrary number doesn't really matter so you can make it whatever you want current carry weight is 0 because they're gonna basically wake up with nothing max weight capacity I'm gonna say 50 to start with. You can play with values and find ones you like. These are just things I'm just... It, it doesn't even really matter. <laughs> Alright, so now let's go into our player folder because we need to add another interface that is going to be what affects the player. So when they pick up things or gain experience or things, that'll be all handled through the interface. So let's go to blueprints, blueprint interface, and we'll just call it, I guess we'll just call it player BPI. So the first one we're going to need in here is just pickup. And it will take an input of an item info. Basically the item that we're trying to pick up, it's going to pass that information along to the player and it'll be item info struct. So we'll compile that. Let's go ahead and create one more function called check inventory space. And it'll just return. It'll have a boolean coming out. So this is going to be, it'll check the character's inventory, see if they have any room, and then pass that along to the item that we're trying to interact with. So we'll just call this B has space. The B the small b is just for a boolean because when you see how it says b has space right now if you change it to boolean it just says has space so this is one of the naming conventions that seem that's pretty standard that i've found in unreal engine stuff for variable naming uh, it just makes it easier to mark booleans and such so now in our player base let's go into the class settings and we will add that player blueprint interface compile that and now over here in our blueprint you'll see we have pickup and check inventory space you'll notice that this one is gold and this one is gray it's because this if we go out to the event graph we can actually call this event pickup and it basically creates like a custom event that can be called from anywhere in the world but this one can't so if I try to do event check inventory space there's nothing that's because when you have an output coming out of it it automatically creates it as a function so we can just double click and open it up and then we can do all our stuff in here but that'll let us basically reach into this blueprint from another blueprint run this function and then get the result in that first blueprint that we're running it from so it's really handy alright so now in the base interactable on the event interact so this is the item that we set up right here this cone we want to get the player character that's interacting so from the player index actually just right here we'll do get player character we'll plug in this player index right here and we will call that check inventory space message So for right now, I'm just going to go into that and default it to return true. We'll set this up later on, but for right now, we just want it to say true. So we will add a branch right here so that when this returns true, then we do our stuff. If it returns false, then we can't pick it up. We don't want it to destroy it. So if it's true and we can pick it up, we also want to call that pickup message. So we'll call that the item info will be a variable that we create item info basically the item information 
of the item in question. So it'll be an item info struct. Compile that. We will pass that in. And then after we've picked it up, we will destroy the actor that we're interacting with. Because we picked it up, put it on our bag, we don't want it on the floor anymore. Now in order to get the item info into this base interactable, we'll go into the construction script. We'll grab out this item info struct and break it open because we want to get this item ID because the item ID will match our item data table we can use that to pull all the rest of the information out so inside the base interactable right here we will do enum to string this converts the enumerator type the display name into a string that we can use so let's right click and get data table row. We'll plug that into our construction script. And then this string can go into the name and it'll auto convert. And then that makes it usable for us to, it'll match. The enumerator will now match perfectly whatever we type in this row name. Uh, we have to, well, we have to make it match, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Uh, the text will be the same. It won't be a bunch of numbers and computer speak stuff. So for the data table we want our item data table and then we will set our item info to that. Compile, save, good to go. So now we got the basis of that set up, We're getting kind of long. Well, that'll be, we got the data table all set up. Let's do that for this one. And then the next one, we'll start establishing the inventory and getting stuff put into our pockets. So I will see y'all in a bit. Bye.